our solution will aggregate that data and gives us the ability to track the data, analyze the data, and give you recommendations how to run that machine better. And using that solution, we can provide our clients with the ability to increase asset utilization by a few percent, reduce cost, reduce machine downtime by uh, highlighting failures that may be happening. And these are all very welcome benefits, and we are proud to deliver these to our 15,000 clients around the world. I don't want to talk about Industry 4.0. I want to talk about Industry 4U. The biggest asset, the most valuable asset that you have in your companies are your employees. It's the creative mind of your employees that help your company ahead. It's what differentiates you. It, what's, it is what sets you apart from your competition. And if you help them do their job better, that's a vast improvement. And anything we can do on the process automation, any two, three, ten percent improvement in making a machine run faster, pales in comparison to the benefits you get from an employee who has all the information at his fingertip to take the right decision. I'm interested in understanding how your humans, your employees, from the creative designer to the line manager to the salesperson to the marketing professional, how they can influence the processes within, within your organization, what kind of information and support they need to take the right decisions and be effective at what they do. The focus is to deliver insight from the data and to deliver insight to the people who have to react on it. Every Hilton hotel in the world uses our system to monitor the air conditioning units in the hotels all around the world. Uh, many thousands of properties on this system. And Hilton does this for two reasons. Number one, it's for sustainability. Um, by comparing the energy consumption, by calibrating it for the different energy needs. A hotel in Abu Dhabi will have different cooling demands than a Hilton hotel here in Porto. But by equalizing it for that, we can see which hotels are doing well with their energy consumption and which ones are falling behind. By giving this information to the managers, what we get is a little bit of a competition between the hotels. Who can be better? Who can win this energy race? How can we be more sustainable? And by the way, number two, we can also save money because air conditioning is the biggest cost factor if you run a hotel once the hotel is built. And Hilton has reported that with that system, in the 10 years that they've been using the system, have saved one billion, not million, one billion dollars in costs. So this is a, a dashboard that we have built for an industrial manufacturer who may be in the textile industry. And what that manager, what that company wanted to see is to see the efficiency of their equipment, the efficiency, how the lines are being run, not just in this one line that they have on site, but across the, the universe, across the world. And what you see on the bottom in this bar chart is all the different machines, all the spinning machines they've been running around the globe. And for this one particular machine that's highlighted here, the managers can see where it is in the scale. Now, with information, there comes a danger. Now I can see where I am. I can see I'm doing bad. I see I'm doing worse. I can quickly assess that I may have a need to improve. My manager can do the same. There is a danger with information, but you have to make the information available to give people an opportunity to react, an opportunity to take the right decisions. What they wanted to have is a system whereby the computer, the system can monitor how operators can use the machine. And when the system spots a mistake, it doesn't necessarily correct them. It can't. The human will always take the better decisions. But it can highlight those and give the user a quick ability to call for help. So when you see here the red button saying service as opposed to the green one, here the computer has seen that there's an issue with that machine. That machine could perform better if certain corrective actions are taken. And the operator can, with a click of a button here, call remote assistance from the manufacturer to get immediate help. Millicron, they make injection molding machinery, also used in some um, textile processes or clothing processes. 
But here we go further. Here the system can spot that certain machine parts can have failed and can not only give the operator an immediate and actionable insight, this heater band here is showing red. It has a health score of 14%. It needs an immediate replacement, and we spell it out, and we also give a button how to replace it. So here's an integration of not just the analytics of a problem, but also an action that we give the operator. We tell the operator what needs to be done, and an integration with the supply chain of the manufacturer, so a spare part can be ordered quickly and efficiently. It is not sufficient to look at analytics and Industry 4.0 and apply mathematical precision to these issues. We have to realize that across our organization, we have human beings that affect how these processes are being run. And human mistakes make mistakes. Human beings are also creative to find ways to run processes better. Industry for you gives us the ability to prevent the mistakes and to observe operators when they take the right decisions and learn from them. I always said that humans interact with the environment with their eyes and ears and, and senses, the human senses. And in fact, when you observe a machine operator or a maintenance guy, the first maintenance action he will go is he'll go to a machine and feel it. And he'll know, an experienced maintenance guy will know when a machine has a problem by the way it smells, by the way it feels, by the way it sounds. So one way we can help the operator is by putting sensor technologies into the field to enhance these skills. And the machine operator is limited by these human senses. And um, it is very funny to try to imagine the world when you can break down these barriers, when suddenly my eyes can see light in other frequency spectrums and my ears can hear frequencies that they can't usually hear, because then you can much more easily detect the sentiment of a person by maybe looking at their infrared radiation, the heat of their skin, if I could see that. And I always said that if I could hear other frequencies, I could possibly also hear my toaster toast. And in case you're wondering, this is what it sounds like. So this, this is the infrared radiation of a toaster on my breakfast table transposed into audible frequencies. Now, if you had a sensor that picks this up, this is all information that a computer can analyze to clearly understand how these machines are operating. So we have built a solution around this, we have built a sensor that covers, that can record a very, very broad range of frequencies when attached to machines. And by analyzing the information um, uh, from that sensor, we can get very good information about the state of any mechanical equipment. And what you can see here in the progression of frequency spectra from a sensor, you can see a hydraulic pump of an industrial piece of machine fail. With this information, we get enough advance warning to prevent unplanned downtime on these types of machines. I want to close because AI is in everybody's mind and everybody wants to know these AI solutions and we build them, we know. I want to close with a saying that was coined in the very early days of AI, when AI was in its infancy. The people who created all these algorithms that we still use today, they used to say, Natural stupidity is better than artificial intelligence. And that will always be the case. Thank you very much. <clears throat>